Welcome to the Startup Grind. I would like to say a few words over Anna Baca. You might know him from eBuddy, but he has a very long history. And we're going to go into some of that. We're going to go into Booking.com. And we're going to fight, figure out why he left Rotterdam, because I think it's a, a pressing issue for most of the people here. So without further ado, I think you should give the biggest round of applause for Mr. Ono Bakker. Can you all hear me? Yeah. I think that says yes. Oh no. I started with that wonderful piece that, that maybe you don't have so many tips and tricks for the audience today, that you're you're not the master, you're not the most successful man ever, <laughs> but you're someone with a story. Is that fair? Uh, let's try it and make our judgment after the, after the, the interview. Delightful. Uh, I think uh, it's better just to talk what happened and, and, and what we did and uh, learn our lessons from that. Super. To basically predict this, this you know, <coughs> future that we all don't know what's going to happen anyway. Very fair. So let's go back to, to Little Honor playing, I'm guessing, uh, some form of hockey I saw in, in Kralinga, you know, very young right, right about here, you know? Right about here. Victoria. Let, let, let's figure out who, who are you? Where, where did you come from? I, I'm actually always proud to explain that I was born, you know, literally 20 meters away from the Maas, the, the famous Rotterdam River, um, in an Havzika house, um, and grew up uh, in Rotterdam. And, uh, you know, went to school to... Uh, Kralingse School, which is a very small uh, elementary school in the heart of Kralingen. And after that, I uh, cycled through Kralingen to uh, you know, the central station to the Montessori Lyceum, maybe people know that as well. And uh, my, uh, let's say, VBO B diploma there. And, um, and then I had to not, take... Not wishing to be rude, but during that time, Rotterdam wasn't the city of skyscrapers it is today. It was still suffering slightly. It was, it, there was open space when I cycled from my home uh, to, to school, for sure. Yeah. There was, um, of course, but you know, that was actually a good thing because if you look back at Rotterdam today, and this couldn't have happened without, uh, you know, that past. So, uh, still very proud to be Rotterdam. I actually feel a little bit on the trader side to have moved to Amsterdam and, and, and left this uh, beautiful uh, city. Wonderful. I, I, what is it about the city you think that breeds entrepreneurship? But what was it that, that forced you into your first lemonade stand or, or such like? <laughs> Actually, my first business that I had was, um, um, it was during my studies to pay for, you know, all the parties and all the stuff that you do as a student that you don't have money for. And that was actually wedding photography. Actually, I think there's a former customer of me here <laughs> in the audience. Um, so, but that was basically, that was a job, it was not really entrepreneurial. It was, Were it was, you a good wedding photographer? I, I would say so. We we'll maybe find that one out a little bit later in the audience. <laughs> yeah. But that was your first venture and that was to, to pay for partying. And more, yeah. So, so you weren't the best student at university, you were someone who no. enjoyed having a good time, you were good with people. Uh, I, I mean, I was like, I think an average student, I, I, I did my fair share of partying, I took my time studying. And I like to uh, engage and talk to it, uh, with people. And um, was actually in, after my studies, I also went for a big corporation. So I wasn't immediately set on to being an entrepreneur. Right? I, I wanted to try to see what work in a in a big corporation was like. And why why was that that you wanted to work in a corporation and not set up your company immediately? I, well, I, I think at that point there wasn't really a driver in me that I want to be an entrepreneur per se. I hmm. think uh, I, I thought it was a good good thing to learn, you know, the trade in a, in a big corporation. That's what my advice that I got from various people that I think I trusted or I, I thought I, I sort of looked up to. I think okay, and they 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 told me, you know what, if you if you want to do something, go start work at a company and, and see how, how things go there and you'll quickly figure out if you fit in and, and um, if you like it or if you want to do something yourself. Super. So this is Hatronics? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and why Hatronics? What, what triggered you there? Well, I actually ended up there because 
of the contents of my thesis, and it was uh, based on uh, on chip cards. And at that time, actually, uh, there was a big uh, introduction going on in the Netherlands for chip card payments, and Gtronics was the biggest company that had uh, the most uh, payment terminals uh, in the Netherlands. So, yeah, I, I went I went there. Um, actually, the the CEO of the company was also a former uh, member of the uh, Rotterdam uh, Students Association. So I got to interview him and then basically uh, he said, why don't you uh, um, come work with our company? Which then I, I did. Mm. And this, this is a hard question because I'm sure there are some people that are associated with Lutronics still in your life, but most entrepreneurs can figure out what's going wrong in a company and that triggers them to set up something themselves. Yeah. What was wrong with Lutronics? <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> I hear some people have suggestions. <laughs> well, yeah, we have only one hour, so. Yeah, yeah. Short no, steps, so, so yeah. from where, where I said, basically, of course, you don't start at the top in a, in a company, so you get to. Uh, I was actually part of a uh, department uh, handling uh, credit card transactions, and um, it was a very profitable business, and what I saw was the lack of innovation, basically. The, mm -hmm. the, the fact that they wanted to, you know, just um, make their money, and there wasn't really no room nor budget to create the next generation point of silt terminal, which could do more th more things. Mm. So, um, and, 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 you know, running was a business. frustrating or was it when you well, saw it? It wasn't frustrating. It, it, it was like more like, I don't understand why. And, and, and you're typically also not immediately involved in the discussion as to go why. And of course, at, at Retronics at that time, there were many things going on. They had like the, they actually merged with Wang Global. And um, so th there was a lot of, uh, things that were also um, out of reach for the you know, subsidiaries, um, but had an impact on what they could do and they couldn't do. Mm. So, um, and then also, that's I think the most pressing feeling that you want to, if you want to, you know, press on this side of a company and it doesn't move that way, then you think, okay, so mm, what I can, what, what can I bring to the table, and, and does it really matter? Mm. So that was when it started itching and. That's also when there was a, you know, the first dot-com bubble going on. Yeah. And what did you take away from Petronics and your, your next step? Mm. Well, you know, you, you know uh, how, how to uh, negotiate large contracts and that there's many people, many stakeholders involved and that you can just, not just, yeah, uh, that you have to watch out for, uh, you know, the, the obvious pitfalls and, and, and they are there and the things take more time <coughs> than, uh, than you uh, think at the start of a project, uh, you know, the usual corporate stuff. Yeah. And, and, and if you start dealing with corporates, then you know how to sort of approach a typical deal uh, mm. a little bit better. But let's move away from your corporate career because there, there was a movement and you, you started to do something a little more interesting afterwards. You started to show that entrepreneurial flair. But how did that come about? Um, that actually happened on a, on a Queen's Day. <laughs> when well, I was, back to partying, it seems. When I was not drinking uh, yeah. Yeah. water. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a good friend of mine that I know from Rotterdam, and he, um, he, uh, he had a startup, um, uh, the startup was called uh, Zoip, and um, what they did was to provide um, a fax service. Um, so you could have a virtual fax uh, number and receive faxes in your email, which was very easy to understand. And you know, many people were actually uh, uh, signing up for the service. Yeah, they just got a big investment from a venture fund, and um, and they wanted to expand. And as any startup, they you know they they were only guys without any corporate you know background. And I uh, and, and no operational skill, and uh, no not no, no skills, but you know. Let's focus on those skills. Let's let's put it like that. And um, but a growing platform. And uh, besides, um, you know, being interested in entrepreneurship, I also like technology a lot. And um, so I, I told him, listen, hey guys, that that, that platform that grows uh, like crazy, I can help you make it grow. And uh, I would like to join. And that's when I joined uh, Zoe, and that was really a, a very cool ride. Uh, as a, as an entrepreneur, as an employee. No, it was as an employee, but yeah. of course, uh, some uh, there was a stock option plan, so that was the first sort of um, uh, time that you um, getting involved in, in in anything like shares and, and upside. And, yeah. Um, you get the thing like okay, so you get like you know the obvious spreadsheet. Okay, if we get this valuation, then this is your valuation. <laughs> Things like that. But uh, so you were I, I driven by I, money. I wasn't, part, I wasn't part of the money. No, I, I was not driven by money. I was definitely driven by the by the project more than the money. 
but of course, it's, 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 it is... Um, I hear some murmurs thinking yeah, that that's not untrue. I, I, I don't believe We that. have to come back to the... I, I, think, I still think that it's actually true, that I went there for the project more than the, than the, than the money and the upside. And what, what happened with, with everything over IP, Zoip? Where did it take you? Well, uh, many lessons learned, and, yeah. and, and I think that company was ahead of its time, and um, it sort of hit me, you know, that, that sometimes you hear the, the KISS, Adam, the KISS keep it very simple and stupid, and, and Zoip was a service, the first service that I launched was just fax to email. Very simple to understand, everybody grasped immediately, but then they started adding functionality that we call it unified messaging, so you could listen to your email via your phone, you could actually reply to those emails, you could have voicemails in a unified inbox. And then I had some friends and then I had to persuade them, of course, to set this service up. And then, of course, they had to do it when, I, when they were either in the office or when I was visiting them and I showed them uh, or watched them do it. And then every time I sort of figured, wow, so these guys have a degree, right? They, they have a, a master's degree and they don't, they don't understand how to set this up. What's going to happen with the majority of the population? So, um, and actually, that happened. Everybody grasped the fax or email service, but the other services which we invested, you know, mm. the, the the larger part of the funds in, nobody grasped. No. And then uh, the bubble uh, burst, and uh, they barely survived by uh, by uh, selling out to uh, um, Tiscali, a uh, an ISP in the middle. So you then became an employee of Tiscali. Yeah, because I was one of the operational people uh, that was earmarked as cannot leave. <laughs> so I ended up uh, doing an integration in a yet, yet another corporate. So, um, but a corporate that was, um, you know, I, I, yeah, it was flying by the seat of its Online and, and World Online, also everybody knows there's a little bit of history there. So it wasn't managed as a corporate. There was a lot of, lot of, lot of mess, and uh, they, uh, Tiscali bought all these uh, ISPs all over Europe. Um, so there was every country had their own billing systems and their own provisioning systems and you know, everything was a big mess. So I tried to integrate a service into that service, of course, that was a disaster. <laughs> but, but out of these big messes tend to come certain opportunities to be much more entrepreneurial because to this point you're still an employee. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So what, what was the spark? What was the opportunity that allowed you to make the big run? <coughs> so one of, um, one of, one of um, a friend that I met um, at a traineeship at IBM, so leading up to uh, my first job, which I really had a click, and I actually lived with him in, in a house in The Hague after I left Rotterdam. He, um, he went to New York and um, had a, uh, well, was working at a, at a um, let's say a, a mobile company doing the trading of, uh, of mobile uh, of traffic and um, that was right about when in the US number portability was uh, being introduced. It was, put, it was already available in the Netherlands but it was always put, put off by a big lobbying of the telcos in the US because of course it won't cost you money to do that. And um, we had this idea, and we, had, you know, we were making a spreadsheet about if we only get 1% of the number porting market, and basically a number porting was uh, worth 80 to $100. So if you do the math, if you do the spreadsheet, it, it, it was amazing, we, we, amazing we've numbers. All, we've all done spreadsheets, there, there yeah. must be a stick in the table here. Yeah, but this is this was my first own spreadsheet, so yeah. I was still green behind the year. So, uh, but it was it was looking very 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 promising, and um, so we went. Uh, I actually went to uh, the CEO of Tiscali at that time, and I said, uh, um, "Ruud, his name was Ruud. Ruud, I have to uh, discuss two things with you. Um, I uh, I want you to invest my in my new company, and I need to leave by Friday for New York because this is where it's happening. And uh, he, uh, I need fifty thousand euros to start this uh, company. <laughs> <laughs> and he said yes. <laughs> So to my surprise, he said, uh, I, I showed him the spreadsheet and the plan, and he said, yeah. uh, this looks really cool, let's, let's uh, give it a try. So, um, what, what did you have on it? Nothing, basically nothing. Okay, Just, uh, it's a very good plan. A good track record, I yeah. think, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope. <laughs> so um, I, I left to New York, and there, Jan Joost group, my, my partner there, and we, uh, we started uh, this company. Of course, this was money that he committed. There, wasn't, there was no deal yet, because mm. you have to put stuff in place, you have to incorporate a company, etc. and then... Um, we went to New York only to find that, of course, some of the 
you know, assumptions in the spreadsheet weren't really uh, as we uh, thought they were. I think one of the bigger problems that we had there was that coming from the Netherlands where any subscription is sold everywhere. That's typically not the case in the US where everything is uh, uh, based on zip code and People don't compete with each other. Well, and the, and, and the companies that have the information, they were the individual telcos, and they were very reluctant uh, to give it up. And um, <coughs> so you yeah, had to go uh, make them do this. But you know, yeah, that's when you need deep pockets if you want to do uh, any form of litigation. So we basically then had to decide, and that was, I think, uh, our first big decision. Do we ask for the money, or do we tell our potential investors that? Um, our assumptions are off, and um, we would rather not take the money, mm. but be in New York without cash, which is also uh, problematic. But we choose to basically uh, not take the money and um, and and um, and come back to Amsterdam. And right about that time, one of my former colleagues at um, Zoip, a Portuguese uh, uh, guy by the name of Paulo Taylor as a bet had uh, created an application that allowed uh, you to use Amazon Messenger on a Nokia 6310. Um, two questions. There might be some people in the audience who yeah, remember who knows the Amazon yeah. Messenger <laughs> and who remembers the Nokia 6310 phone. Maybe you should also ask who remembers the fact, because that was a very old uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that phone still goes to be as like the best phone ever, I'm not sure yeah. that we can hold it up. But it, it was at that time it was like the, the phone to have. Battery lasted for nine days. <laughs> it was a great phone. But you're gonna have to take us back to that time because having MSN Messenger on your phone doesn't sound that groundbreaking today. Well it was because MSN Messenger ran only on a program on a computer. Um, with logic on the with all the logic basically um, or a lot of logic in the application and Paolo as a bet and this was actually a bet that I was you know part of making before I left uh, at Tiscali and uh, so we <coughs> also ended up at, at uh, through Zoip at Tiscali and um, he um, he said that he could make it work imagine on this crappy interface uh, it's called Zap no WAP WAP yeah, well, yes. yeah. The wireless access problem. It's, 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 it's cannot believe. But he, 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 he made it and he put it live on his computer. And his computer, he, he lived in Amsterdam. And at that time, UPC was called A2000. It's, um, so he had his A2000 modem and that was running as a server. And he was blogging about it. And then somebody told him, um, uh, it's all nice and it works on the phone. but." I have a problem. My wife is pregnant. I work in a company. The, the IT manager basically locked down all the computers. I cannot install MSN Messenger, and I want to communicate about, you know. Yeah. So, can you make this service available in, on a website? So that, that was the the question, and then he started working on that, and he he put the first version live, and apparently people had been watching this blog and the thread, and there were some updates and questions, and then he put it live, and actually he was out of internet at home for three weeks after the first day, put it like, because there were many people trying to access a service and do chatting on MSN Messenger in the web browser. And, then, and this is really, this is before there's like web applications, you know, it, this is a time when you had still had Twigger to do your, to do your web email. Yeah. I'm not sure if people remember Twigger here, but the, the web applications and JavaScript stuff was really uh, just starting to, uh, to happen. Um, but it started really as a, as a, as a bet. It started as a bet. into a company because that that is the. Yeah. So we had some. Uh, we had also at that time. This is all. There, there was no Amazon Cloud. So having having a service up on the internet was much more expensive than uh, than today. But today you could fire up a server, you know, pay ten bucks, and be online. Yeah. There you had a you had to do a contract with a with a. Um, um, you know, data center, it's like a yeah, could be your commitments. It's just it's more money and, and actually more complex. And I knew everything about building uh, a platform that I learned at, at Zoip and, um, and Tiscali. And I had some hardware that I took out of the out of the Zoip uh, deal. So actually, I could go to my former colleague and say, "Listen, hey, I have I have some hardware. Uh, we can set the servers up. We can take it away from your your modem, uh, from your computer at home, and put it." in a real uh, data center and um, you know here I, I'll do it for free for you 
but let's just make one appointment if we uh, and we're going to help you uh, grow some users and um, we're going to get you to a certain level of revenue and um, if we get there we're going to go to the notary and uh, let's form a company and, then he, and, and he was still working at Tisky at the time and he uh, had no idea uh, how to bring a company that had, had no real plans um, um, and he said uh, let's do it and basically uh, we, we, we hit those targets like within, within a couple of weeks and um, we went to the notary, we, uh, we split the company uh, a third each and we're, we're, we're in business. He was still working uh, at Tiskali and JJ and, and, and me were taking care of uh, you know, the first deals for uh, trying to, to, um, to get um, uh, sell banner advertising yeah. because that was the model. We had users and we were showing uh, banners and at that time, you know, CPMs or ECPMs were still, you know, five, six, seven euros. <laughs> Very good, uh, good business. And we had lots of users hmm. and they, and, and we had them coming in every day. Basically every day we had like, you know, a couple of a hundred new users in, in, in the really the first weeks. As lots of people didn't want to work at the office anymore. They just wanted to chat to their friends on MSN. Yeah, it was, also, it, well, it was also in schools where I think the, the, in the beginning the majority of people came from, and also mm. school computers were completely um, locked down. down. Yeah. So it was it, arguably <laughs> the first uh, web application mm. um, that that that, that um, was really um, allowing people to do stuff that they really wanted. Yeah. To communicate, to chat. So I, I was chatting with you uh, yesterday. And you Actually, it was Lucas that told me this one that you were in a taxi cab in Jakarta, and uh, yeah. the taxi driver asked you, "So, uh, what, what company are you with?" And you said you were the director of eBuddy, and he stopped the taxi. Yeah, he was. He you were a little worried. He, he got out. He came out, and he started to say he wanted to have his photograph taken with. Yeah, him. and he's calling his, <laughs> his, 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 his children, his wife. He said, "You don't believe who I have in the car? We have I have the founder of eBuddy in the in the car." Well, I mean, I'm not sure if everybody knows the numbers. It's, 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 we, we, it's, it's, I mean, we did have, uh, in the end, uh, I looked at the numbers again, 400 plus million users registered uh, on the system, which is, yeah. it's a lot. At, at, the, at the peak days, we were getting in more than 250,000 new users every single day. Yeah. How do you cope with that? Because it, it must have huge costs. Were there investors involved? Were you investing yourself? Yeah, so in the beginning, we, 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 did, we did it on our own. And then, uh, of course, you got you get into the discussions whether uh, so JJ, my partner, he wanted to go to um, a conference like EdTech. EdTech is where you go, where you meet all the publishers and all the advertisers, uh, and, and you can do deals uh, on, on advertising, which was bringing in the money. Paolo could have used some help, um, you know, in in the programming department, uh, developing stuff, and. Um, yeah, I was also, of course looking at the money to uh, buy more hardware because we had to accommodate growth. So that's typically when you <laughs> you need uh, money to uh, get to the next level. And there was one competitor in the U.S. and we 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 tried to uh, we had a plan to do it without money because we thought it was better for us. Mm -hmm. But then our our competitor in the U.S. got funded by uh, by Sequoia. It's not the first VC. And, and, and of course, yeah. That How did that feel when you heard that deal had gone through? Yeah, a uh, um, little bit of uh, um, bad, of course. Mm. You have serious competition now, mm. and you know, you know, actually, why well, this was actually funny because, of course, we also went to Sandal Rock. We talked to all the investors, and, and we actually met met uh, the partner Rudolf Bota uh, of uh, of Sequoia, and and and. and he said, uh, we asked him, so why why didn't you give us a call at least? And um, because we were bigger, that day. We're, 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 we always were bigger than, than um, our US competitor. And then he, he basically smiled. He said, yeah, this is the value of our own rules. I probably sell number two better than number one. And so it, 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 it is, um, um, but of course, if you have a comp competition and you are, you're bigger, you can show that you're bigger. Um, then getting money in from other investors actually uh, is a lot easier. Mm. And your your investors were they European or were they American? No, so we we shopped around in in the valley for uh, for money and we got a, we got a couple of offers and valuations. Um, but also, basically everybody uh, told us um, we love your story and all the American. Um, um, well, hearing and hearing. Yes, that, that's a nice polite term for it. Yeah, but they also said, but one thing, guys, we uh, we drive to board meetings. We don't fly to board meetings. 
meaning if you we want you if you want, want us to invest, you better move your whole company. And at that time, there were I think already 18 people in the company. So if you move 18 people from Amsterdam to to the US, I think you lose uh, you, know, you easily lose half half a year, maybe even more. Yeah. So we decided not to, but we had some offers. So and then and then actually uh, we decided to uh, take a Dutch um, um, a Dutch uh, angel fund yeah. that was also accepting that valuation, but on a lot a lot of easier terms, of course, because with, with 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 VC money you have a lot of a very thick contract. Yeah, and this was a very thin contract. Uh, <laughs> let's say very founder friendly. Uh, oh dear, did they learn their last math words? <laughs> No, 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 actually not, because I think within a year, uh, yeah, yeah, we did a second round um, with a uh, VC in the Netherlands that, you know, had like the big contract. Yeah. And then typically the old investors, they, uh, they get sort of the same rights as the, old, as, as, as the, as the new investors, or at least yeah. the, whole, the whole setup of the company and all the rules uh, are as protective for them as, the, as they are. Uh, so it's less founder friendly for sure. And how was the growth of the company during this time? Because you go from the, the angel fund to, to a VC being behind it. Yeah. You obviously required the money or, or did it, was it just you wanted a bigger car, the office needed to be glitzy, you wanted to have champagne instead of kava at the, the party? <laughs> what, what was the reason for raising more cash? Uh, Some people have gone through that, I can hear from the laughter. So yeah. No, well, it's, 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 it's um, well, there's one lesson that, 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 that we have, we, I've learned or that we always put in our head that you eat the cookies when they're served and not when you're hungry. <laughs> so um, if things go well and there's, and, there's, and there's a deal to be done and it's a good deal, and actually the second deal, um, <coughs> we also explained and, 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 and said to, uh, to the VC fund that we wanted to um, have a little secondary, which means that you take some money uh, out, so it doesn't go into the company, but goes into your own pocket. Um, so this is your first real entrepreneurial success. This is your yeah, you know, company it, building up. But this is nothing. Uh, and this is also how you said it. This is nothing life changing. But mm. I, 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 had, I hadn't bought a house uh, before, and, and there is a wife at home, and, 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 and you just want to have a little bit of comfort. So you, I, I would like to buy a house. And that's yeah. the reason why I want to. And uh, if I go away, uh, you know, to the US, which I do every every other month, uh, I, I want them to feel com comfortable too. So th that's a there was um, and, and and we had things going for it. Uh, at that time, we even made uh, Google Zeitgeist, so um, we were the, in the top ten of most international searched uh, search terms, which was, you know, it, it, things went really well. We're 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 making money. We're growing revenue. We're growing our users. We were on track on the plan. How how were the three of you as a team at that point? Because everything's going in the right direction. Was everyone pulling in the same direction, or were there? Cracks at that point. No, no, no. There have never been any cracks. I think I, I look back at a very solid uh, um, corporation. Paolo, the um, the developer, he really didn't like uh, being in any meetings. So basically, we took him to the first meetings at the notary and and, and the first meetings when we uh, started fundraising. And then he said, "They say, guys, can I can I go uh, back to my computer? <laughs> I, I I don't like this." And it was a very, uh, but he trusted us completely, and I think that was the most important thing. And mm. JJ and me, we had a good separation in in, in our tasks. I was more more involved in developing and uh, operations, and JJ was doing a lot of uh, the finance and business development, sales kind of deal stuff. But when it came to making the big decisions, all three of you were still together. Yeah, well, it's basically JJ and me sort of thinking through and 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 and, and sort of you know making the very short list and then uh, discussing with, with Paolo. I, I, most likely, you know, most of the times over dinner. So mm. this is all in Amsterdam, and then you, we walked out uh, for lunch or for dinner, and then we said, these, these are the things that we have to decide on, to, yeah, yeah. and we think this is it. And and he was very, yeah, for him, he was never, he had never uh, set up a company uh, and was never going to. Yeah. And uh, basically, um, we brought this idea and, 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 and uh, made it uh, valuable for him. So, so let, let's look right now. You, you've raised. Two rounds of, of capital. Yeah. How much of the company did you still have as the three of you? We were still. Uh, we still had more than the three of us. I still had more than fifty percent of the company at that time. So we. Had so actually, your dinners were where decisions were taken. Then you went to the board. No, but there are lots of decisions that 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 um, are written down in a, in a contract that you have to go to the board too. So but I mean, you can have the majority of the shares, but you can definitely not have the majority of the voting power when it comes to, you know, really important things. 
right? Like uh, big investments or a sale of the company, or the, the usual stuff that you'll find in any any good yeah. structured uh, investment deal. So how do you, you you go from this because you're you're writing high, growth is is exponential. Where do the cracks set into the business model, the strategy? Where where, where do you see it sort of going from growth into? Yeah, there was a always there, there was always there was always a crack at the beginning mm. because. Um, this is pre-Facebook, this is pre-open platforms. This is, we hacked our way into Microsoft. And then... Um, You're quite open to say that, to have on camera. You hacked into Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. well, their, 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 their protocol uh, was undisclosed and, and we reverse engineered it. So, and, yeah. and, and we had, and, and, um, but we had some friends at Microsoft in, here in the Netherlands, which is you no know, marketing sales office, so they, no structural or the strategic decisions are taken there. But they could get us in touch with the people who are running MSN, not the platform. So quite early on, we invited them over to at least show them our office and that our intentions were, you know, um, uh, genuine. And yeah, you were gentlemen then. And that we're filling a gap, hmm. right? That we're filling a need, definitely. Um, and then I remember the first time we were still in our old office at the Kaiserschacht and we had just moved in a table weighing a ton. I was sweating getting this up to the fifth floor. So this, the table was literally, you know, 10 minutes in place and then the Microsoft guys came in and they, they basically said, so, so you're the rogues, which means the, 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 yeah. the pirates. <laughs> and uh, yeah, which was... Uh, a, a really good start to the meeting. A really good start to the meeting, but yeah. um, we just explained them, you know, our intentions and, and I think we agreed to disagree that we weren't allowed to do what we were doing, but also to keep uh, in touch and regular uh, send regular feedback. Um, and by that time, we were also adding, besides MSN Messenger, Yahoo Messenger and uh, AOL Messenger, and we were all in talks with these companies, figuring out how to we uh, how, how how we could become legitimate. So you were flying a lot. You're you're, you're negotiating. Yeah, yeah, we're, 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 we spent a fair amount of time uh, in the valley for that, and, and also our platform ended up being there. So we had, you know, we had uh, 400 servers in in, uh, in San Jose. The reason being that all these uh, messaging platforms were also located in the U.S. So from a backend perspective, you want to be really close uh, to those servers, and you can never be close to all your customers anyway. And, you're, and that there were servers like you know Akamai uh, to to help you with that. Um, so uh, we had good reasons to be there uh, a, a lot of the time, and, and um, this dev, and also more, you know, you always talk to uh, to funds. You're you're always fundraising. You're always ha happen to be in the neighborhood. And we had a little office there. Uh, and, and for uh, American companies, if they think that you're there just because you're on a trip, they, it's easier to meet than that I'm going to be there. So yeah. it worked really well. Yeah, and 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 uh, so, so, then, so then then you correct. must have met at some point, sort of. Company, uh, I believe we we discussed that was called WhatsApp. No, this is a little bit later. So, oh. so yeah. So um, th that was actually after the iPhone launch. So so things um, became uh, for us the, the, the crack was there, like, right? That we that we were not legitimate. Yeah. And um, but we have figured out a way to make our software available on a mobile phone. In two thousand six, we six we launched on mobile. This is free smartphones. Right. Uh, the, the smartphone was, I think, the Sony Ericsson P800. But the majority of the phones were Nokia phones, Samsung phones, LG. We, we call them feature phones. Yeah. Java-based phones, and each platform has its own little. That's kind of the the communicator, the, the big phone. That the communicator, up. exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and 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 we were advanced. We figured out a way to make our software work and work really well on more than a thousand a thousand different phones which was really quite something. Mm -hmm. um, and we had many, many users on phones and had companies calling us to say, can we do a deal with you? We want to pre-install, pre-load your, yeah. your software on the phone. But Microsoft as, uh, and, 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 and Yahoo said, uh, no way, you cannot do it because these guys are not legitimate, legitimate. You are aggregating all our services in one interface, right? We had MSN users and AOL users and at that time also Facebook users mm -hmm. in one list which is very you know, uh, comfortable for the user, but was taking away marketing uh, space for each of these individual companies. So we always hit the roadblock there. And then Facebook basically showed everybody that an open platform 
could create a lot of value, right? This was when, was when Facebook opened the platform and invited developers to, to join in and do crazy stuff with APIs. Um, so Microsoft sort of gradually started to move on this and then they invited us being the biggest sort of, you know, uh, company uh, accessing their servers without any agreement in place and decided to engage with us uh, because they also wanted to be open and create an open protocol, but then it has to go through all their technical uh, hoops, which is, takes a very long time. So that's when you see that, that, that you're sort of entangled in long negotiations and some, sometimes <coughs> things just outright stop, there's no communication, only to find out that uh, Microsoft bought Skype, right? So there goes the whole future of MSN, right? So that's when we started to see Wow, uh, things are changing. And then also the iPhone and the, the, a new platform opened. BlackBerry was uh, really big in, in messaging on mobile. And we were still doing messaging more on a PC basis, right? The whole yeah. Amazon service is, was designed around a PC. So there's, a, there's something called presence, which signals if you're away or if you're uh, busy or, or, or um, uh, offline. And the, and the mobile messengers never had that, right? So you basically uh, have a social graph, which is the phone book, and um, typically you're expected to be always there because the phone is always with you. So you have a, a simpler UI. But um, we were, at the time... So technology went past your solution? Well, we, we were profitable. We were in talks with MSN to do a deal. We had Nokia. We had a deal that we were going to be pre-installed on a half a billion phones. Um, and then the numbers sound amazing. Well, they work. I mean, they are yeah. amazing. I mean, but, but and then and then uh, a little company starts, and then you have to explain to your board that that is really the future, and not the stuff that we're doing. But you know, um, before um, and, and then basically legacy, like what you think the big companies have, you also have your own legacy. And yeah. we had a, we had a two two big things. Amazon. While MSN and a service like BlackBerry Messenger or WhatsApp uh, or iMessage is technically very much the same, in the heads of people it's very different, right? eBuddy was a synonym for MSN or AOL or Yahoo, right? It was a replacement. It was a replacement and um, BBM and WhatsApp were a replacement for SMS, ah. right? Which, I mean, it's the same technology more or less, but it's, it's in different sections of the head. You said that, that sort of when it was what's up, it was the idea to state how you were feeling or to update that. Yeah, so, so one of the, yeah, so but there's little things, and, but important things why why we were always fighting and in, in, in fighting to catch up and never could catch up. Catch up. The, um, so at that time, the, most of the mobile messaging went on on BlackBerry, and um, for this is a little bit technical, but for mobile messaging to work really well, you have to have an application that sits on the device but doesn't use any power, just it basically sleeps and then gets woken up by uh, a push message hmm. that's handled by the device owner, right? So you have Apple push, you have uh, a push from uh, Google, and there was push from BlackBerry. They had the first phones with, with a very reliable push service. And um, of course, in order to have a good messenger on BlackBerry, you want to have push. So we asked for that, but uh, and uh, we went all the way up to uh, sea level. We had some friends who were high up in BlackBerry, but this guy told me he's also a guy from Rotterdam, actually. So he said to me, "Oh, you, you haven't heard this from me, but your company is marked as competition, and you will never get push." So how does that make you feel at that point? It's is that the death uh, of your very company? unfair. It's it's yeah. it feels like I won't use the word here, but it feels like yeah, this is uh, a very big hurdle because. Yes. At that time, um, BlackBerry Messenger was only on the one platform, yeah. and WhatsApp, who signed up for push at BlackBerry being a an, an update service, mm. that's why the name is there. The name was, um, hey, what's up? Hey, WhatsApp. It was yeah. like sort of like the, 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 the joke there. They, um, and it was a small service, and at that Right in MSN, you had like the um, your status message where people were broadcasting what whether they in school or walking their dog or in love with their girlfriend and things like this. So a lot of communication what was going through the status messages without seeing. It's something. complicated. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so and then they s s saw people because I was at WhatsApp. I, I I wanted to buy the company at that time. I said, okay, so we cannot do this. So I just go there and and. and, and and uh, see if I can buy the company. So in your two rounds, you'd raise enough to buy WhatsApp. 
Well, we didn't have enough cash in the bank to, I think, to immediately buy them, but I go there first, see if there's any opportunity that you want to uh, uh, join forces. By this, point, by this point, you're much bigger than they are. So Way bigger, yeah. how, how did that meeting go? Because well, it, it, it was you're, very you're thinking that maybe the, the, the death of the company is nigh, this could be a, a nice way forward. Mm. How did they look at you? <laughs> no, they were, they, 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 they uh, I think it was, a, well, it was a good meeting. And, um, um, they had a lot, lot of things going for them, and, and, and they, they basically explained um, how, how they were looking at things, and and, and, how, and, and, and and basically concluded that things were going well, and their, their numbers were uh, promising, so they would like to try it themselves, and they didn't need any money because they were also an application that uh, one of the few applications that charged one dollar or one euro for for an install. So um, they were, you know, hanging in there in the beginning. Um, but um, yeah, that's when you start to see that, that you have um, your your existing business that, that that really well is more or less end of life, and that you're going to really fight really hard to get into the new business, and that you're not the first mover, and that you're trading. And how does that that feel? So you you've obviously got Paolo, who's the, the head technical guy, thinking we need to do something completely new, something technical. You've got uh, by, 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 JJ. by by then we're also a, a, a lot larger comp uh, right. like we I think and everything also ch after you know 30 to 40 people things start to change you don't necessarily um, um, add more execute execution power you know with the amount of people that you add after that I think it, basically between 50 and 100 you add overhead but you don't add speed so uh, and you slow down yeah well you, you just things take longer you, there's more meetings and uh, people start to you know optimize things that don't need to be optimized a little examples like where where you have um, on these on these messengers you have to uh, receive a code right which verifies that you're the owner of the phone number and then yeah people you know start to um, uh, gold plating stuff you get a you get a translation company to translate all these messages explaining about the code into different languages meaning that the code sort of moves to the end right and then if it's too long uh, longer than sms messages it gets cut off so the code doesn't even get to the phone but things like that start to happen in a bigger company if you're not uh, on top of it then people are concentrating on that while you've got people leaving eBuddy in droves to go to one of the other messaging services are using uh, their iPhone. What, what's happening in the company at this point? Are, are people jumping from the ship? No, I think we had a very tight team and a very, very, um, 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 how do you say this, um, determined uh, team. We had 30 nationalities in the company, I mean, I think 33 even at the top. Um, so we have, that, that's really like something you see somebody you know, arrive at the whole family with kids they have to go to school in Amsterdam and they go into the company and and, and, and um, we had a lot of you know events uh, lined out for, for for them so we made a very warm and easy start we helped them with housing so um, well, your principal business is going away so what are you planning on these these nationalities yeah, so doing we, after this no nah, so we so we, we did develop a, um, uh, a competing service to whatsapp and then when we th we thought this is difficult this is a difficult play uh, at that time you're competing with facebook and with google with th they were doing their own messengers like the hangouts apple introducing iMessage then then uh, it starts to become visible that messaging is really hot space and um, um, those companies don't need to make money with it right um, our typically our biggest income source was on the web uh, from uh, advertising so that's you know drying up or getting less interesting because these ECPMs are, are gradually uh, declining and you see less growth. We were still growing at that time. Um, so then you think, okay, uh, if we, it's hard to, and, and, and it's difficult to explain two services, right? So eBuddy service, the original one and the new one. Um, people are, are don't, don't understand, they come to eBuddy to aggregate uh, existing messengers, so they think that they can aggregate WhatsApp and, and other stuff, which they couldn't, so there's yeah. all kinds of uh, things going on. So what do you do then? You think, okay, so we have this great technology, we're a really good team, let's find a partner that um, can utilize our technology on their user base, yeah. right? And then, so we set out um, to, uh, to uh, find a partner, more of a strategic investor, and we found one in Japan, um, a Japanese gaming company, um, 
Were they your first choice? Because I, I think you, you went to, to find partners and you, you scoured high and low at this point. The perfect partner for your company. Um, no, we, yeah, yeah, you talk, I mean, so deals don't happen overnight. So you are in talks with, um, first you, you decide who could be potential partners, right? So we had um, basically three big uh, sections and, and, and we focused at two telcos, right? Because telcos at that point were yeah, taken by surprise. And, you know, it is, it's things like which surprised me the day we, when I, the iOS 6, I think it was launched, or uh, when iMessage was introduced, and where if you had a phone on the same operator, where you had uh, basically um, there was no SMS traffic here from the SMS client, right? Yeah, I had to explain that to C level people in, in the Vodafone they were, uh, and KPN, they, they, they didn't know what was coming. Mm. So um, there was definitely room to speak to telcos to educate them, to help them get their feet wet in, in, in uh, let's say, over the top applications. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we thought, or I still think that there's a way to make money there as a telco because you have some things that you can control that yeah. nobody else can. Um, and we, we talked to various gaming uh, companies, the usual suspect, of course, and then there was one, yeah, and, and then a couple of them bite and they go into the next phase. And mm -hmm. yes, we, I think we had like a couple of uh, companies into the, in the, the diligence phase, so pretty far along. and then. We uh, we struck a deal with um, with a Japanese uh, company, Cree, which was really cool, and 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 we had um, um, actually very nice because that was also when uh, Mr. Verhagen was uh, um, uh, Secretary of State at that uh, time um, um, went to uh, discuss some um, um, items with the Japanese government uh, for you know car factory here you know, that was being closed down and there were and there were um, sessions and um, yeah you call up to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and you asked um, if they could arrange uh, a session also with our potential uh, you know uh, strategic mm -hmm. partner to be invited and and that happens basically uh, yeah. um, ultimately what happened is that we when we signed the deal we had a closing dinner in the embassy uh, in Tokyo with the mayor of Amsterdam there, which was really, and having, you know, all the, the the founders of the Japanese company and their wives in kimono style with nails, with the, the Dutch flag on it. It was, it was really... Uh, were they serving bitter bowls? <laughs> they were indeed serving bitter bowls. Of course, of course. <laughs> well, can't escape from the embassy functions. Uh, yes. But how, how did that deal, because in, in the beginning that deal was, I think, to, to acquire... You know, most of the company it didn't end up being that way it was um, a roller coaster of a deal so actually um at, uh, very much uh, like pretty pretty far into the process we had a letter of intent to buy the whole company mm. like 100 percent of the shares so at this point you think i can exit unless i get one, one dreadful one, one weekend to stay. i i thought that i was like you know um off to curacao yeah de de definitely and then Something happened in. Uh, this is a company um, that just grasped that on average we're, we're making 60 euros per month on an active player. You know, I mean, there are some crazy games in, in, mm. in, 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 in Japan. How many players did they have? Yeah, they had uh, more than uh, two and a half million players. Okay, so they're, they're making a little per they month. They're making a <laughs> bundle, right? Mm. Yeah, and they, were, they, they bought one company, and um, so we got, in, we got in a really good offer. We got in the, I, mean, I would have sold for him. No brain. Um, you were doing a little dance. Yeah, I was, I was doing a little dance. On Friday, we got it in on, at five o'clock, and I said to JJ, well, I mean, I don't think we need to have a big discussion on this in the board. I mean, we yeah. could play yeah. hard to get, but <laughs> we're going to go. So, um, <laughs> can, can, you, can you give us some figures? Or <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's high numbers. But that's okay. it, it's, it, was, it was a really good deal. And um, I know you're going to question how many zeros from yeah. millions at some point, but I'll, I'll leave it right now. So then um, what happens is um, in the weekend, everything changes. Um, so a lot of, let's say, younger players were playing these games and paying mm. this money. And then somebody in the government started asking questions. How why, was there a, a part being... Um, uh, gambling. Mm. There was a gambling. There, there was something that you could explain as gambling. 
And then the number two guy of the company, so the, 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 the co-founder, who was leading our deal and the deal team, was relieved from all his duties and had only one priority, manage the government to basically make sure that our revenue, uh, their yeah. revenue of, of this company, um, yeah. So the one that's supposed to be signing off on your deal is now yeah. dealing with the ministers and, and dining everyone at very high levels. Yeah, exactly. But you're left hanging. Yeah, so we got a call on Monday, and then and then and then uh, this is a typical, uh, let's say, losing face moment for a Japanese company because they always keep their word, and then they had to say, "Sorry, we are not going to do the deal." And it was a very, very strange. I I, I can still remember everything. Like, very strange conversation. So, <laughs> okay, when we hang up the phone, it was a very short conversation. Okay, I think we just lost this whole deal, and we were on this. This is a deal that we've been working on for. Yeah, at that time, I, mean, I think we we're nine months into the deal. Or something. Yeah. So what what what, are we, what date are we talking here? Two thousand twelve. This is twelve. Yeah. This is the, this is April two thousand twelve. Exactly. <laughs> but you you so think it's all lost? So yeah, we you think go from it, doing we, little dance. Yeah, to we think it's all lost. So think, okay. So okay. Um, did we even have a plan B? Mm. And then um, yeah. Did we, you? Uh, well, at that point, no. You're so okay. you're you're really like yeah. you're yeah. yeah you're sitting there and, and, and you're like looking at each other and you basically don't speak yeah you're like yeah you, you don't know what to say. <laughs> there is nothing to say at that point yeah and that then, dream has just vanished yeah and you immediately uh ask the board to come the next day to discuss you know um, what to do and and you see that the board has is also very disappointed but they are there to cheer you up and to they've been at dinner parties over the weekend saying what I, a wonderful I, I don't know we made. shared them and we had some conversations yeah. everybody was happy so hmm. Yeah, I mean, but, but these things happen. So it, it, it's 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 and 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 never, nothing is a deal until uh, there's a signature on paper where actually the money is in the bank. So um, um, and then um, yeah, we we started to think. Okay, so what what what's what's the what's our next option? We wait a little. We wait, wait about a week to uh, engage with the with them again, and then we started asking more questions. Can you explain uh, why? And, and, and then they uh, gave a reason that, uh, they never gave that reason for this, you know, the, the, the thing mm -hmm. that happened, that they gave a bullshit reason, reason about that it was really difficult to completely manage the company from uh, from, from Tokyo. So, um, but that, they that came up with something, because you, you go from this despondency, but they come back with a deal. No, no, so, so, so for two weeks we mm. thought we've lost the deal completely and there was nothing, nothing in there anymore. Yeah. But then, uh, of course, we were entitled to a little bit, and it, it didn't explain that much. And but then we read in the papers about this. It's called compgacha. Comp it's like uh, the, the, this this dynamic into the game, and um, that uh, the, uh, the government was looking into their practices and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we sort of figured out like, okay, yeah, this is this must be the reason. But they never would tell us. Um, so then we ask at least, we, we, come on guys, we are entitled to at least a reason. We cannot just you know jump ship and then say nothing. Yeah. So they came up with, the, I think, an excuse to say we cannot manage the company. Uh, from uh, we don't have the right people to completely manage it from uh, from here, and, and and don't know how to put uh, we how to put uh, in in Amsterdam. And that opened the door for us to say, okay, so why don't you buy, uh, you know, forty percent of the company, right? And um, we'll we'll do uh, a, a deal. Um, Same valuation as before. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, okay. yeah. And you were able to take a bit more money off the table at that point with the other shareholders. Well, that was an important part, important uh, moment for the company because um, prior to that, you have uh, all kinds of preferences stacked up before you. You have the, you know. And, and, and it becomes complicated because you have investors, you take some money out, out so there's all kinds of, you know, uh, class B1 and B2 shares. And, uh, it's complicated and um, we even did some tricks with a warrant um, um, where we took a loan from one of the LPs of our investor and there was a guarantee from... Uh, so so we, we, we basically uh, had a complicated structure. And um, which is also is difficult. So you didn't stick to your original motto of KISS? No, no, there, there, definitely, it was uh, <laughs> completely opposite. Um, but it tends to happen if your company uh, exists for a longer time, um, and you get creative on doing deals. But I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting the sign that we, we have to move on because okay. I, I know most people want to, to get. You've got this in, in investment. Forty percent of the company yeah. is sold. Yeah. 
and then they prove to be just as unreliable as they were in the negotiation phase. Yeah, so uh, after one year, they had an option to buy the rest of the company, um, um, and the op option expired uh, after one year. And they, um, you know, this 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 this, this problem in in in, um, in Tokyo sort of grew on them a little bit bigger, bigger, and they weren't hitting their numbers, so they were on the stock market, and, and the stock uh, took a took a dive, and basically overnight they closed down their Chinese, Korean, UK, and Dutch operations. No. So Weren't you no a Dutch operation, or you were attached with them? They're working from your office. We are. Uh, we are a Dutch operation. We had a team of uh, forty people working for them, and there were forty people on the project. So we're working with eighty people on a project yeah. for them, integrating communication. And they just shut you down overnight. And they're your forty percent shareholder in your company. Exactly. Yeah. So um, let's go to that board meeting because that sounds like a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> That was a, uh, it was a, it was crazy, but uh, I I will spare you some. I, I cannot talk about it in, in too much detail. But it, it wasn't uh, it was uh, it wasn't fun. That's that's that's. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and sixty percent of the shares on one side of the table, forty percent on the other. I guess. <laughs> well, the, the problem is that, that that this decision is a board decision in 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 Tokyo, hmm. and you try to explain to them. Listen, you have forty percent in this company, right? So if you stop overnight, and if we and and we have to. And this was actually on Friday, so we had to tell. On the Monday, basically. Our employees would figure out that the team on the other side wouldn't be working on the project anymore. No. So you either uh, and this is your biggest customer, right? Yeah. Uh, this, is our, this, this is our only customer. Is our one, yeah. They, yeah. they were paying uh, at that point. They were paying a lot, lot uh, 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 most uh, part of the bills. So they just pull the plug out. You're left with team. Yeah. We did one. We did one really smart thing. So we had the option uh, expiring in one year, and, and and because they didn't buy the whole company, we also had sort of had to have an agreement in place for us to work for them, right? Because if you don't own the company, sort of, yeah. and we had some uh, things in there that uh, we wouldn't have all our people working for them. But also, I think two days before we finally signed the deal, we said this agreement is going to last for two years, so that it wouldn't end like uh, all yeah. at once. So we had a very firm contract in place that they had to commit to one more year of paying license fees and and and, and, and uh, getting. Uh, uh, Three uh, development teams. Uh, and did they? Well, they said that they wouldn't. Right. So, yeah, you 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 have to take your shareholder to court, hmm. which is very strange and very very. You're trying to so so you basically have a new reality, right? Your partner is gone. Um, you try to explain to <coughs> the people who are executing, like let's close everything down. You try to explain to them that it's smarter to keep our part of the people working and. You know, we have a contract, so you have to pay for a year any which way. So, yeah. and have a good story and sell the company for a higher valuation, or basically, you know, put a gun against our head and uh, have uh, uh, thirty people from Friday to Monday out of you know a meaningful uh, sort of you know, direction at least for the foreseeable two weeks or three weeks. If it was uh, Silicon Valley, that would have been done immediately. Yeah. So it's it's and and, and then try to sell the company. With that, with a shareholder who also says, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, you, you think that you, we have to pay for one more year, but uh, we don't think so. And uh, well, you went to court. Did you win? We we went um, as close as um, we went. Yeah, we have. I cannot completely explain everything because we had some uh, agreements on this, but we went very close, and um, um, it, it was very unpleasant. But uh, finally, we had a settlement, and uh, we we have. Um, I think we. Um, we're, we're both um, happy with that. And now you're, you're faced with a company with no customers, with shareholders that want to take, I'm guessing, something off the table, and a very difficult position. So yeah. what do you do? Because there's a, a bunch of money came, coming in. There's no future money coming in at this point. I'm guessing the shareholders were vying for every penny. Yeah, yeah, they, they of course they, they want to do one thing, so they said, oh, okay, so let's give you three more months and uh, let's work it out. So that means that you can dividend out the remaining part. And um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like a very. So good deal. A, You're a shareholder too. Why didn't you jump at that? Yeah, well, of course, because uh, I, I had some other plans, or uh, I didn't want to be uh, having a hard stop when when the when the money was gone. Mm. And uh, there's a new rule in the Netherlands also. It was, I think, just introduced that as a director of the company, you have to um, sort of uh, give agreement to dividends. And we just lost our biggest customer. So I could put on my director's head 
that's it. Sorry, that's a direct. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pay out dividends. So um, and 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 why we have great plans and said we have a lot of good future. So why why uh, why why the rush? So instead of having forty percent of your board not liking you very much, you have. <laughs> Quite a lot of the investors also <laughs> looking at you with uh, slight suspicion. Let's point. say it was it, it, they, they were interesting times. They were they were um, interesting uh, times. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned a lot. But it, but but, but yeah, out of that came a deal, and I think it's the deal that that most people I'm guessing when we get to the questions in just a few minutes are going to ask about. What what kind of deal were you able to put together to save the staff? And and you're still director of eBuddy at this point, so there, there is a continuance, so maybe yeah, you can just take us through that. That's not, it is a very atypical deal, but you see them quite often in the valley, this is also where, where, where we learned about those deals, it's called an equi-hire deal, basically where you, you sell your staff, um, because we were under time pressure, uh, we were close to selling to uh, a telco, um, but they also, in the end, um, yeah, didn't, didn't come come through, so we had a couple of other options to sell the company, and then um, with the, with the, with those also come that you have to to go along with the company as well. And we had JJ and I also had some other ideas about our, our personal futures. So um, the deal with uh, booking allowed a couple of things. Um, it allowed our staff to be doing uh, and, and and playing with a let's say. A winner in the game. They they, they were they, they had signed up to be uh, with a big growing company, and Booking is definitely a winner. It's, it's really uh, mm -hmm. a really good company, really well managed, very focused, uh, very international. So the fit with our people was there. Yeah. Um, they grew quite big on web, and they you know they had to execute on mobile, and uh, we were really big on mobile. We had all the mobile skills. But then this deal that it, it took care of the. The shareholders as well as the, the employees? Yeah, yeah, everybody was, uh, so in, in, in the end uh, it was a good deal for, I think it was a good deal for Booking, it was a good deal for our shareholders, it allowed us to, uh, you know, um, finally uh, close the books on, 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 uh, on eBay and, um, 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 you know, pay, uh, pay out uh, everything and, and, you know, put a, put a good end. I mean. Yeah, if I have to sum it up to people, I mean, it could have been much better. If, of course, you see a deal like WhatsApp, you think, geez, this could have been us, but we had, we, we weren't, so you, I, mean, I cannot yeah. lose sleep over that. Um, and it could have been much, much worse. And um, so, yeah. Well, I see from your LinkedIn profile there are a number of patents in your name, so there, there, there has to be something that you have up your sleeve. Well, we have some very good uh, early on uh, patents in the messaging space. So, um, but um, yeah, I cannot really comment on that. But um, they, they, they are good patents. I thought I'd try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just uh, go a little bit because I know we yeah. need to end now. You've gone through a very big ride. You've gone from that that point where someone hears you, the director of a company, stops the car, starts taking photos of you, to the point where you have to sell your staff off to save face and to, to make some money as a director. Would you call yourself successful? Ooh, yeah, it depends on what, what measurements you take. I think, yeah, I think we've done really well. I, 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 um, um, and I, I think back, did we make mistakes? Should we have done things differently? And in hindsight, it's always, you know, it's quite easy to, to say this is where you made a mistake. But at that point, and if we were there again, we would probably do, do the same thing. And there's also, you know, things, um, um, there, you need to have a, a little bit of luck as well. Mm. You know, if, if we were one week earlier with these with the Japanese deal, um, yeah. we would have done that deal. It, so it tends to be... Do you, do you sometimes wake up in a hot sweat thinking, why wasn't it one week earlier? Well, I, no, but, but it's, it, it's, it's, it, I, we, we did quite good. I'm very comfortable and uh, <coughs> I had 10 years of a ride. We had a great team. Uh, we did really achieve some things and um, I, I, I came out, uh, you know, Quite well for myself, and um, I'm I'm now uh, continuing and looking uh, together with my partner at, 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 at new things. We're investing. And the three in. of you are still together. No, so Paulo uh, left uh, to Portugal. I, he, he's he's more living the, the good life in, in Portugal. He's he's. And you decided to stay here with the rain and the hard work, and the family, of course. Ah, <laughs> now we find it. Yeah, no. So so yeah. Plus, um, you know, I couldn't see myself 
doing nothing. So um, we we took it easy for a little while and um, um, they did some cool stuff. But we're gradually uh, gearing up to uh, to do something new again. And then you know, we're 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 doing some small investments ourselves. And, and, and it's so we might be able to ask you to join the investors Could club be. with our you always ask. many investors. <laughs> um, just as one last question, because I think that the people in the audience here. Do you have a couple of tips for startups to, to, to stop them falling into some of the pitfalls you've perhaps gone through? I think for, for, for us, the most important thing um, as a, why we, why we uh, make it as a service, the, the three of us could do most of the things. So we, we had uh, three skills. Uh, we could really develop stuff. There's a programmer. We could do um, uh, deals, and I was able to, you know, to build a a technical platform mm -hmm. so I think um, and I, I have seen many people approaching me with plans cool plans all kinds of you know, PowerPoint stuff and then there are three business guys and then yeah they, no need, program. they need money actually to build a prototype yeah yeah that, that's 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 I think uh, try to you know, get something out of your hands yourself <coughs> and, and, and ideally uh, something where you can show, uh, you know, some revenue. I, th I think, uh, but this is for Dutch entrepreneurs here. Um, we were making money from day one. Um, and we were really keen on making sure that we kept money and we had all our books really tidy. So we could always more or less do a due diligence in our, in our, in our first conversations with investors. Uh, we could show them everything. And, 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 and it was very clear that we had our things uh, you know, really uh, well uh, figured out, and, and and everything was sort of correct, and um, the books were nice and tidy, and, so, and, and that, that, that 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 helped us a lot. Okay, so tidy books. Yeah. But we have to be tidy on time as well, because I think we have an audience of people that might have a question or two. Could we open it up? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's another group waiting for us uh, for ah. this uh, audience uh, for this theater. Um, would it be possible to do it in the Wonder Bar? Of course. With a beer? Sure. Sounds better? Yeah. 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 Um, wrap up. Thank you, both of you. Um, a small present for you, Anna. Thank you very much. From the whole team. This is the last book in Rotterdam. I bought it um, on Marktplaats tomorrow, this, this, this morning. It's about Rotterdam. Very good. Cool. We hope to see you in the second version of this book. <laughs> because uh, I don't know if you know this book, but it is about uh, uh, 100 year entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah I see. Van der Horn, uh, Van Beuningen, that kind of guys. Be, being born here, I, I, I see all the, f the families that I met at the Kranische School. And, That's and right. And and Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, so maybe we hear a bit more of that in the bar, also <coughs> with the, the photography, because that business sounds like the one that, that we'd really like to ask the question. Yeah, for. snap chance. Missing <laughs> <laughs> chance. And, uh, Hold on. Hold on.